Iowa defender. Let's go, man.
and I'm going to take care of you, and I'll take care of that signature. Last question for you. Yes. Um, who were your action hero, like icons growing up, and have you met any of them? Uh, my icons growing up, my action heroes growing up were, you know, like, I would say, Harrison Ford, <laughs> John Cena. <Sr>. Yeah. <laughs> Stallone, Schwarzenegger, these guys, Clint Eastwood, Woo! Uh, you know, from director, anything that Steven Spielberg made. I, I will tell you guys this, when I first broke into Hollywood uh, in 2000, I made a movie called uh, The Mummy Returns and then Scorpion King. Yes! Yes! Uh, when I first broke in, all those guys, so from Harrison, Stallone, definitely Schwarzenegger. These guys were so gracious to me, and they were so welcoming because, you know, they were all they were all big stars, so they could have done everything they could to kind of hold me back or push me down. But I'll never forget that. So, I, I'll, at any opportunity I have, I always make sure that I pass that along, which is always be good to people. Always be good to people, right? When you're coming up, because you never know what's going to happen down the road. So, anyway. all right. Those, those guys were my heroes. I think, uh, I think you and plus, also, I will say this: I grew up. A lot of you guys don't know. I grew up in, in, uh, in from a family of professional wrestlers. Yes. And those guys, you know, were my heroes. My dad, Rocky Soulman Johnson. We had Jimmy Superfly Snooker at that time. Randy Macho Man Savage. With you. I, I did, I bought a clip. And uh, do you want to tell us about that clip? I did, it? yes. Um, this is a porn that I made back in college. No, I just realized Lord Jordan just hurt me, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, so this is, a, uh, this is an exclusive clip uh, of myself and uh, Jack Black, Karen Gillan, Nick Jonas uh, behind the scenes. It gives you a little idea of what, uh, what the movie's all about. And, uh, and a uh, and, uh, little, uh, what's this, a uh, little snack-sized Denzel, uh, what, oh, Kevin Hart, yes. <laughs> I make a movie that encapsulates what the holiday spirit really means. The spirit of Wonder Man, discovering who you are. I have such a tremendous amount of love and reverence for the original movie, and with Robin, and then to me. sure that the spirit of the original movie flowed through this continuation of the Jumanji story. Seeing any type of game that you go, oh my god, what is this? I want to play. Man, curiosity is what got us in the game. Yo, what's this? This is a game that will always find a way to be played. A game for those who seek to find a way to leave their world behind. Jumanji school kids that are in detention. They get sucked into the jungles of Jumanji. The original Jumanji came to our world. And this Jumanji, we go to that one.
this and we're going to wrap this thing up now, right? I think, uh, I think it's time that there was some talk about taking a it's, selfie. It's, 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 this is, it's been, it's been, it's been very special. Been very special. Uh, so, so I got to do something here, so. Uh, I'm gonna, I wanna do this thing with all you guys for, uh, what's that thing called? Oh, Instagram. Yeah. Alright, here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna shoot a video. I'm gonna shoot it this way. You guys can be really, really quiet, and then at the right time, I'm basically gonna say, uh, you know, I, I came here to Comic Con, I thought I was gonna see a few people, no one showed up, and, uh, you know, they're, they're not behind me, and then I say, they're not behind me because they're all here! You guys just go bananas, and I'm gonna do all this, and I'm gonna come and shoot you because you're gonna get my tattoo. And you know, really cool. All right, oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right, you guys ready to do this? Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. So I came here to uh, LA Comic Con, and, and you know, I thought the crowd was gonna be hyped. I thought that who could, who just. So we're here at, uh, at LA Comic Con. I thought the thought, you know the crowd was going to show up, and as you can see, no one's really behind me. And I thought there were going to be a hype crowd. And, uh, well, again, no one's behind me. They're not behind me because they're all here. What the?
this is called Dead Sea Aquarium. Look at these fishes, incredible. And this is our portrait. Uh, it changes in different layers and start to peel off. There are different portraits. What an awesome creation. And look at these gadgets. Yeah, I have those.
So let's talk a bit about the book itself. So it's a mix of things, right? It's hip hop. Uh, so they showed me, somebody showed me a sneak peek just about 20 minutes ago of Stan's cameo. So I know what it's going to be. It's pretty cool. And here's where we had some fun. We reenacted that entire scene in the RV. So two days after Thor comes out, go to Stan's side and my side. We're going to do the reenactment of that scene of Stan and I. We're going to have some fun with it. So tell us why people who do cameos should win awards. Why should people who, who do cameos, why should they win awards? They shouldn't. I should. <laughs> what are you lumping other people in with me for? He always does that. I can't stand this man. Why should Stan Lee win an award for cameo appearances? Because my cameos are great. <laughs> His questions are so simple. Can't you ask a tough one? No, no. I because I've heard. Here's why I've heard you. You think you're actually the one that gets them to come back and make money because they have to see the cameos over and over and over. Is that no, only once, not over and over. Dude, I told him this once. He can't even remember correctly. When people go to the movie, if they bend down to get a piece of popcorn, and while they're bending down, they miss my cameo. At the end of the movie, they say, hey, we missed Stan's cameo. So obviously, they have to go back and buy another ticket and watch the movie so that they won't miss my cameo. And that's the reason the movies make so much money, because of my cameos being missed. setting numbers are because people keep spilling their popcorn? Without popcorn, we'd be broke. <laughs> and they charge them a lot on top of it. I wish you'd be more serious up okay. here. Okay, let's talk about comic books. Then let's talk about comic books. Does this mean comic books? Yes. You walk around going like this, comic books. Comic books. I want to see you talk without using your hands. Okay. Let's talk about comic books. It's simple. Okay. Oh, by the way, comic books must always be written as one word. Oh. Never, never write comic books. Because that means... You're in a great Fabio. That's it. Ah, uh, Spider-Man. Young, so now we go from from intellectual person Tony Stark to teenager Peter Parker. Why why that shift? Why Peter that? Parker was intellectual. No, no, he no, was no, a no. great student, wasn't he? Don't you remember? Go back and read the origin. Yeah, I I actually have a copy of it. I've got it. I've got a Spider-Man number one and Amazing Fantasy fourteen. Jesus, so. you could retire on That's that. It. That's it. Um, in the 40s, how did you break into comic books? How did you, how did you break into the business? How did I get into the business? Yeah, in the 40s. <clears throat> Accidentally. There was a publishing company. I hate my voice. There was a... Doesn't anybody have a drink of water or something? Water? There was a publishing company that published a lot of different books. Sports stories, detective stories, love stories. And they had a little line of comic books that nobody paid any attention to. But they needed an assistant to help with the comics. They needed somebody to erase the pages and put them together and yeah, nothing. So I wandered up fresh out of high school and they gave me the job and I became a comic book man. And that was it. A uh, comic book writer. So, did, did you ever have... I didn't write right away. Right here. Thank you. So, the, here's the question. Did you ever have any artistic... I don't mean this in a negative way, because you have a lot of creative ability, but did you ever have any artistic ability? Did you ever want to be... <laughs> I beg you, it didn't help. Here, I'll hold it for you. 
nothing will help. What did you say? The question was, did, did you ever have any artistic ability? Did you ever want to draw? I drew ever since I was a little kid. When I was four years old, I would draw a horizontal line on a piece of paper, and that was the ground. Then I would draw little stick figures running around and punching each other. That was my idea of an action story. I always, always did that. I made up my little stories for the stick figure and, and the ground. <laughs> All right. Now, now we're getting to the 70s, right? So we've gone 40s, we've gone the 60s. Now let's get into the 70s. By 1970, I, I, I start collecting comic books. I know Stan Lee because your name is on top of every single comic book, right? Stan Lee. Wouldn't let the publisher if it didn't have my name on it. I was a glory fiend. Uh, how, how did that come about? Every comic book had Stan Lee present. How did that come? How did that come about? Because I presented them. Oh. <laughs> All right. So now. There comes a time where you, everybody used to have to be in New York City, right? That was a given. You had to write in New York City, you had to draw in New York City, you had to go to the office in New York City. Because I lived in New York City. Right. But eventually, Stan Lee doesn't live in New York City. Stan Lee somehow magically lands in California. That's as far away in this country as you can get, minus the islands from New York to California. How did Stan Lee go to California from New York and why? They had been doing animated cartoons of our characters. And in Hollywood. Producing them out here. And I saw them and I thought I could do better. So I called a meeting at Marvel and I said, why don't we produce our own cartoons? instead of letting other people do it for us. And I said, in fact, I am willing to move my whole family out to the coast and set up our own unit. What they didn't know, I wanted to move to the coast. I wanted this beautiful weather. I didn't want those snowy days. But I made it sound like I'd be making a sacrifice. <laughs> And there wasn't a dry eye in the place. They said, you would do that for us, Stan? And I said, yes. <laughs> so I moved out here, and we set up Marvel Studios. And that was the beginning of the whole thing. Yeah. And, and, right? and, and then they invented FedEx. So now nobody has to be in New York City anymore. We can do it. Look, I was in Canada. I'm Canadian. And I was doing G.I. Joe, a real American hero, in Canada as a Canadian at some point. So that's how good it is. You don't have to be that a That was your redundancy. You said you were born in Canada as a Canadian. What else would you have been if you were born in Canada? you got to learn to be economical. These people don't have time for that repetitiveness. Yes, sir. They, they just gave me a, a warning, uh, five minutes. So before we go here, you take this case, you need, let's take a couple questions from the audience. I'll get the questions, I'll bring them to you. All right, we've got one right here. Yes, sir. Don't sit on it. <laughs> Mr. Lee, what do you think is the most in influential thing that you've ever done in your life and why? Me or the world? Either way. Either way. Answer it either way. I think Spider Man. Spider Man? Okay. I now, think now it, part two, why? It changed superheroes forever. Why, why Spider Man? Why, how would you come up with the name? Spider Man was the one about a teenage kid, and he wasn't that strong in the beginning, and he had a lot of problems and he wasn't like any other superhero. And after Spider-Man, people started writing better superhero stories, and I should have been given a royalty for every one of them. <laughs> All right, we, got, we have another question up here somewhere. You got a question? Okay, young man. 
out of all the modern comic books, which one was your favorite to make like the plots and stories for? So this question was, of all the characters, which story, which character do you like writing the, the, the most? Which one did you like writing the most? Oh, I like writing all of them. They were all fun. And I like the idea of being able to change. I could go from Doctor Strange to the X-Men to the Hulk. Each one was so different that I couldn't get bored. I could be boring for other people, but I couldn't get bored. What is your favorite Marvel hero? Uh, uh, another question, what's your favorite character of all the ones you've created? I love them all, but I'd have to say Spider-Man. Alright, we've got one young lady right here. And then we've got two more questions here. Yes, yes. Uh, what is your favorite Fantastic Four? Your favorite character? Out, out of the Fantastic Four, which which one which one of the four do you like the best? If you I was to... hoping he'd sit on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the Fantastic Four. Who's your favorite of the four? The Thing. The Thing. Yes. He was my favorite too. He was cool. And then the Human Torch. I like the Human Torch. Who doesn't want to be flying around in flames all over the place? It'd be cool. So you notice the difference in our competitive company. If somebody drove a car, it was a whiz -bang G8 or something, in the Fantastic Four and in all the Marvel books. If they drove a car, it was a Ford or a Mercedes. It was a real car. And if they lived somewhere, it was on the east side of New York or on 58th Street or on facing Central Park. It wasn't in some fictitious city. Marvel was real life, and the others were just all made up. In fact, I'm real life. Anybody from the competition who sits here is really made up. So take that, Metropolis. Take that, Metropolis. All right, let's see. Who's got a question? One more question, out here. Here, young lady. What is the most important message that your characters bring to all of us, or a really important message that you wanted to bring to the people who read your comics? Well, that's a good question. I'll bring it up to you. It's a good question. See, now he's rating the question. Yeah, so that's a good that one. was a good question. That was a good. We're going to end on a high note here. Her question was, "What is the message that you hope that your characters convey to the audience?" Uh, when you're when you're writing that, what are you trying to get across to the audience? Buy Marvel Comics. <laughs> <laughs> and that's as deep as you went. All those years, I thought I thought there was more. Sit on the on the water and be quiet. No, no. <laughs> so for now, the message I always try to get across for crying out loud: you can be a good guy or a bad guy. Be a good guy. It's more fun, it pays off in the end. Nobody likes the bad guys, and that's it. But, now that's an interesting answer, because you created a lot of good bad guys, or bad, how would I say that? A lot of cool bad guys, we'll say. Magneto, Doctor Doom, the Green Goblin, I mean, those are all, those are, to me, those are just as important. Doc Ock. Doc Ock, right? Look, I, look at, I always felt that. Galactus. Galactus, right. Right, those are good, because I would hear Scorpion. This, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go, Venom, no, he didn't do Venom, over here. So, I'm not talking to the kid. Not, nothing, 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 I'm, sometimes it's good he can't hear. So, okay, uh, before we go, would you like to leave a message to these good people who come here to see you? A message. The, the deepest message I can live, I can live, it's very philosophical, and give it a lot of thought. Buy Marvel! <laughs> and the 
most important message of all. The most important of all. Join me in this. Ready? Excelsior! Saying he, he's your double, he's your doppelganger right here. Look at this. He, he looks just like you. That's your twin brother right there. Okay, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Okay, hold it. Before we go, ladies and gentlemen, I do this with Stan every time we do it. We take a selfie and you guys get in it. And here's what the greatest thing is: the best part isn't Stan or me. Sometimes it's the funny faces you guys make, right? I zoom in and I actually show you guys over us. So, I'm going to do a selfie photo here, I'm going to hit my button, alright, let's turn around Stan, let's do one here, yeah, we got to look this way, ready, ready everybody, on three, one, two, three, there we go, one more, one, two, three, there we go, thank you everybody, thank you Los Angeles, We just finished Comic Con and now it's October 29th. Thank you. Now it's October 29th. Um, Stanley Comic Con is finished. Now it's about 5 p.m. I'm driving out of Staples Center. The exhibitors are unpacking their stuff and leaving right now. Bye, Caesar. See you. Bye. Exhibitors packing up their merchandise and they are leaving. Thank you. This is the south entrance. Now I know where the LA car show, uh, how the cars come in. This is the south entrance of LA Convention Center. Look at these trucks. 